I had the absolute pleasure of joining teacher Sharon and her friends for an afternoon Chinese tea ceremony. What I thought would be an hour event turned out to be closer to four hours. So I'm going to try and summarize four hours into five minutes for you. One thing to keep in mind, a tea ceremony is very much like a wine drinking event. Everyone has their own unique style. But at least this is going to give you an idea of what a tea ceremony is like in Taiwan. The first thing teacher Sharon does is prepare her tea serving area the way that she likes it. She has all the essentials and she has chosen her teapot. There are many different types of teapots that she can choose from, depending on how many people she plans to serve and what kind of tea she plans to serve. She's picked her crockery and she's ready for the first step called Wen Hu Tang Bei, which means warm the pot and heat the cups. In other words, she pours hot water into the pot as well as the tea decanter and the cups to warm and sterilize them. While the cups are warming, teacher Sharon pours some dry tea leaves into a bamboo ladle. This gives us an opportunity to appreciate the texture, smell and appearance of the dry tea leaves. This part is called Shang Cha, which translates to to appreciate the excellence of tea. She passes it around so her guests can also smell and see the tea leaves up close. The dry tea leaves are now carefully poured into the already warm pot and she lets them sit in there for about a minute before adding boiled but not boiling water. However, this is not to brew the tea, rather to wash the tea leaves, so the water is poured out and discarded. Now it's time to brew the tea. Again, boiled but not boiling water is added and also poured over the pot to keep it nice and warm. The brewing time of different types of teas differ, so best you ask the tea master how long you should brew it if you are not sure. While we are waiting for the tea to brew, teacher Sharon empties out the water from our cups. And I'm not sure if you've noticed or not, but she won't crisscross her arms because it's considered bad etiquette, so she passes the cup from one hand to the other hand when she pours the water out. For the first brew of this type of tea, teacher Sharon lets the tea brew just over a minute. Then she decants it into the warm tea decanter and this is called Chu Tang. In warmer weather the teapot is left open so that the tea leaves inside won't overheat. The tea in the tea decanter is now ready to be served into small little cups. The tea cups that are used are usually small, dainty and preferably with some kind of little tray which makes it easier to serve. Once the tea has been served, it is polite to first examine the color and smell before taking your first sip. In very traditional tea ceremonies, you should try to finish the cup in three sips, which will be hard because the tea is piping hot. Once you finish the tea in your cup, be sure to give the empty cup a sniff. The tea leaves a beautiful and unique aroma in the cup. For the second helping of the first brew, teacher Sharon won't serve us. Instead, she will simply hand the decanter over so we can serve ourselves. Our tea ceremony was very social. Besides drinking and tasting lots of different types of teas, we also had lots of laughs and chatted non-stop for at least four hours. Depending on the type of tea you use, one helping can be brewed more than once. Teacher Sharon starts preparations for the second brew of the same pot. At this point, if you have any residue left in your cup, you can pour it out. She has a designated pot for discarded water or tea residue. Then we place our cups in front of her to make it easy for her to serve us a second time. The tea brewing and serving process is repeated. Remember with each serving from the same pot or from a brand new pot, make sure that you smell the tea before you drink it and smell your empty cup after you've finished. Once we've had three to four brews of this type of tea, teacher Sharon pulls some of the tea leaves out to explain the characteristics of the leaves. And by simply looking at the leaves and stems, she is also able to tell us that these were hand-picked, so this was a very good and exclusive tea. About an hour and a half later, another friend arrives and teacher Sharon gives up her tea serving seat, much like a new dealer at a poker table. The new teacher has her own style and way to serve and present her tea. So in addition to several helpings of tea served by teacher Sharon, we ended up having at least another six to eight helpings of tea. Since Chinese tea does in fact contain a certain amount of caffeine and other components, I am able to confirm that there is in fact such a thing as being tea drunk.